Hello, folks. Welcome back to World War II TV. And yesterday in the Ask Me Anything, I did say I would do an Arnhem book review show. So I am doing an Arnhem book review show. So specifically about the fighting at Arnhem Bridge. So not really the wider operation of Market Gardens. I'm not going to be talking about 30 Corps or the American 101st or 82nd Airborne. Particularly, these are books about Arnhem. I will do another show later on, not today, uh, about other books on Market Gardens. So um, I'm breaking my own rules slightly because the first book I'm going to recommend is actually about the wider air plan. So um, it does cover Arnhem. It's got Arnhem on the cover. So it's Arnhem, Myth and Reality by Sebastian Ritchie. So it's one of those books that takes a different angle at the uh, operation. It doesn't particularly talk about the fighting at the bridge or what the battalions were doing as they pushed towards the bridge after the operation. It's more about the air planning. It's about the use of C-47s and gliders. Because a lot of, um, frankly, rubbish has been written about that aspect over the years and blame been put to various people and Montgomery and Browning and Brereton. And Sebastian Ritchie, who works for the RAF, basically took all the actual original archives and looked at the plan afresh and set Market Garden into context of other operations, potential airborne operations planned for the summer of 44 after Normandy and kind of unravels all that aspect of it. Sebastian was at one point going to be a guest on the channel and then in the end he, he changed his mind. But despite that lack of appearance on World War II TV, I thoroughly recommend um, his book. It is, say again, Arnhem, Myth and Reality by Sebastian Ritchie. And it's 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 a good um, evaluation of how the plan was put together and, and you know, debunks certain of the myths there. So that's the first book. Hi, hi Matt Bone is. I might, Matt, you haven't watched the live show for ages. Um, my second book is if you have to read just one a book about the Battle of Arnhem, the one I'm going to recommend is this one here. Um, Martin Middlebrook, Arnhem, 1944. So Middlebrook was a legend, uh, wrote about the Somme, wrote about Bomber Command, I think. And I had this book, I've had this particular copy of the book for about 20 years. If you look in the front, it's got signatures of various um, Arnhem veterans. I think most of the um, uh, um, Airborne Recce guys, well, I mean, so I got at, I was just terrible, the camera's bad for that, but it's got signatures of veterans because I used to take it to um, Arnhem with me. So Middlebrook, um, consummate historian, based on oral histories, based on interviews, based on the archives, and just takes you through the operation day by day by day. David Mead said uh, Middlebrooks is his favourite book as well. Um, it's probably old school in the sense that there's been maybe some um, revelations about some of the units that, that have come out since then, more detail about it, but I still think it holds up as a single volume. I should also shout out, though I haven't got that with me, Ian Ballantyne's book on Arnhem. He did a show on World War II TV. Lloyd Clark's book on Arnhem uh, or Market Garden are, are worth reading, but if I had to pick just one overview of the Battle of Arnhem, it would be Martin Middlebrook. It's easy to read, lots of good maps, um, and takes you through it day by day by day. So that's my first two um, books out of the way. Um, then moving into more of the modern way interpretation of the battle. So um, the German side, the German movements, I suppose, are more than uh, what has been discovered more in recent years than perhaps in the in the years just after the war when the accounts were written by serving British Army officers. People like General Urquhart wrote his memoirs. Other people wrote their memoirs, and they were basing it on what their experiences were and the war diaries, the regiments they commanded and the units they commanded. Then you have books like It Never uh, uh, Rain, uh, Snows in September by Robert Kershaw about the German aspect of Ma uh, Market Garden. John McManus wrote about the wider battle talk about the German and more German archives are coming. So the next two books I'm going to recommend are Krista Bergstrom's. So he is a Swedish guy. And um, there, there are two volumes, volume one and volume two, um, uh, The Battle Revisited. So what they do is they are good at placing um units in in the timeline, more information from the German order of battle, the German archives. So it, it it gives more identity and bones to the clashes between German armor and British units and kind of pieces some of those details together. The other thing I like about um, Christo's books is you get Q, co Q codes like there, uh, which means you can scan that. It brings up 
bits and pieces like Imperial War Museum footage, Pathé News. It brings up extra information to help layer in the understanding of um, of the battle there. Hammond Jam is also saying that Middlebrook's book is a definitely a go-to. Um, there, as as I've just said, there are so many books that are on them. I could just spend all my time listing how how good they are. Uh, so I did like Ian Ballantyne as well. Um, uh, we just had a question about um, what I thought of um, Tucker Jones' book. Um, it's all right. Um, I, I think Anthony, Anthony Tucker Jones, when he gets a subject he's really interested in, his books are, are, are really good. I think he is also very prolific. So some of his books, maybe they're not the level of detail some of my viewers would require. I, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's, it, 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 it falls short of Middlebrook and a couple others, in my opinion. Um, Soylent Green is saying, I haven't been disappointed with any books of guests of yours. Um, we need to read Adam Makos, blah, blah, blah. Evan Thomas's Road to Surrender is a really good book. So, yeah, so Krista Bergstrom's books, I'll hold them up again. Volume 1, Volume 2. They do lots of modern kind of investigative work into the battle and help you place units and follow that timeline. And I say the Q, the Q codes in there give a real um, multimedia aspect to it. So I would recommend those ones for a very modern fresh evaluation i think because krista's swedish as well he doesn't come at it with an agenda i think a lot of british historians are very protective of the arnhem um legend the reputation of it doesn't mean they're not objective but you know i i've got my red beret here when i was in my reenactment days i'm not gonna wear it for very long because it, it looks silly with a beer but this is my airborne recce beret that i used to wear um put it on the right way around um get it if i can get it on the right there we go um, used to wear this back in the day and um, uh, get it straight, Paul. There we go. Um, and so I have a big interest in the Battle of, Mar uh, of Mar Market Garden. I went to Arnhem many times in my... I'm going to take it off. I look ridiculous. Now. I'm too old and too fat. I've got a stupid beard. But that is my beret. I used to wear that to Arnhem. I was last in Arnhem as a reenactor in 2004 with a um, Airborne Recce Squadron. And we had about 10 Jeeps with F Vickers, K guns and blah, blah, blah. So... I think some of the, um, yeah, uh, David uh, Bergstrom's book cover both sides. I mean, it's not so much a book of personal stories and accounts. It's more a, a kind of unit histories um, that, that, that kind of examine where units were. Um, but, yeah, it covers both sides. Um, but, yeah, uh, you get photos like this of, of, of knocked out vehicles and blah, blah, blah. And, and um, it, it takes you into the... Um, uh the crossing of the wall and lots of context anyway they're very good um so my next one um is more of a personal choice uh bent based on the uh the beret i just had and it's i think it's still available in a different cover and it's remember arnhem by john fairley so john fairley was a member of the first airborne reconnaissance squadron um and this one is actually signed uh, by john fairley um to um Bill Chandler. So this is this is a book John signed to Bill Chandler. Now, Bill Chandler was a member of the first Airborne Reconnaissance Squadron. He was uh, captured in Wolfhazer. We did a show about the Wolfhazer ambush, and and Bill Chandler died in the eighties, I believe. And for some reason, his widow had passed away as well. His stuff came up for sale on an auction site about 15, 20 years ago. I bought his medals, his beret, his prisoner of war diary, and various photos. I ended up with his post-war beret as well. And that, and in the collection, was the signed copy of this book and a, a Cornelius Ryan's um, uh, um, Bridge Too Far book that Bill Chandler had been given by his wife. So, so this is specifically about the Airborne Reconnaissance Squadron, but it does include the wider story of the units that are around the first Airborne Reconnaissance Squadron. So it's a very personal choice. Um, it's it's it, it's got great maps in it. Um, this is like I'm doing, being like the chieftain on his channel there, just holding up books instead of uh, and, and maps. But I. There's a lot of rubbish written about that. Well, not so much written, but the, the movie has the idea, the Bridge Too Far movie, that the, the airborne reconnaissance jeeps didn't arrive. I think that's what Sean Connery as Urquhart says earlier. The jeeps didn't arrive. Well, they did arrive, and some got shot up in ambushes, and others ended up moving on towards Arnhem. But but very none of the jeeps actually got through to the bridge, but reconnaissance corps personnel were involved in some key battles. Um, Major Goff, the commander of the, of the, of the unit, ended up near, bearing near... Uh, being at the bridge himself and and played himself in the movie theirs is the glory and the uh, airborne recce members took a 
a part of the defensive perimeter in Oosterbeek up near Paul Krugerstraat and the bakery there. So that is a very personal choice. Remember Arnhem by John Fairley. It's it's not a big book. I think it's still available in a new in a new paperback edition. If it's not available, you could find it uh, easily. You probably find it on A Books or something like that. So that's a very um very personal choice. Um, now to bring it down to more of a the personal aspect because Middlebrook, um, his book on Arnhem is the whole operation. But some people like to read it from that smaller point of view. So the next one I'm going to recommend, and there's two books about the same unit. Is is this one? Is my, this how long I've had this? It's an old paperback. Men at Arnhem by Tom Angus. Now, I've had this for a long, long time. When it first came out in the 70s, it was all written with um, uh, pseudonyms. And Tom Angus is actually an officer called Jeffrey Powell. And he never identified in the first edition, which I have, who all the people were. But I, when I bought this book, and I must have bought it at a, at a secondhand bookshop, in the, inside the book, in the, in, the, in the front, was the previous owner's list of who who the characters really are and if you buy a new edition you get to find out who all these people are so the brigadier is brigadier shan hackett um tom ang tom angus it says there's jeffrey powell major john waddy who wrote the brilliant tour book about arnhem is there major w ms page um etc 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 so you, you get to this is this is in the uh, my copy an extra bit but i would um i and there's a, another note the guy put at the back in the book about who the battalion actually is meant to be being the 156th parachute battalion so um so this is a really good read it doesn't ever really cover the context of where the operation is failing or whether or not the plan was well conceived it just places you in a group of men who were fighting in that battle there it kind of reads like a don baguette curry here screaming eagle in normandy or 18 platoon by sydney jerry it's one of those just up close and personal books and the new the, the, the more recent editions have all the real names listed at the front so you don't have to um um do that uh ham and jam very good point mike peters glider pilots on pilots on it's also highly recommended mike peters has been on the channel a couple of times it's another crass great book um i only have it in pdf so i can't hold up a pdf very well i should actually get a hard copy of it but um you know i've only i've only brought into this room about a third of my Arnhem books, and I was having to be very selective about which ones to choose to recommend to you. Maybe I could do a a second a second um, Arnhem book, but then if I give you too many books, you'll just go, well, "I'm not going to buy all them, Woody," and you won't buy any at all. So I'm just I'm being very very. Uh, uh, there's books I wish I'd bought out here that I I chose not to because as I say I can't I can't recommend everything. So um, yeah, as as the first edition is a puzzle book, you have to figure out who and who 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 people are based on the action if you know so men at arnhem by tom angus is a really good read that's my old paper book paperback book if you have already read men at arnhem by tom angus and my camera is doing trying to focus itself because i'm holding up books a really good book to accompany that and it's the largest book I'm, i've got here is from delhi to arnhem about the 156th parachute return. So this i bought in the bookshop in oosterbeek which if ever you've been there is one of those ones where you think that you're going to go in there and buy one or two books and you end up coming out with as many as you can carry because there's great books there and you end up finding that some of them as in this one are signed by the author so you go oh well i didn't really need it right now but so you, i i was there with with colin and a couple of mates in 2019 i spent well between us we spent like several hundred euros in the bookshop there but this is a really good book because it has the context of how the battalion was formed. It has lots of breakdowns of who they're facing. So you get, you know, what units were in the 9th SS division. Lots of great um, uh, personal accounts. You get um, rosters, company rosters. Okay, these don't hold up very well with the glare. Um, but lots of maps. Lots of, um, you can see that map a bit clear, more clearly there. Uh, a map showing where the fighting was, Operation Pegasus. That's the evacuation after battle there. So... So this one here from Delhi to Arnhem, uh, the author's name um, is um, John O'Reilly. It's an expensive one. It's one of those big, glossy top coffee table books, but it's a really good um, analysis of the battle from the point of view of one battalion. Um, so that's another book there. And then the final one in this selection um, is another kind of personal favorite. And I, I, I bought, I had a paperback copy up until last year, and I found a hardback uh, first edition uh, in a shop in Carrington, in fact. 
And it's Arnhem Spearhead by James Sims. And this is available in all sorts of editions. So James Sims was, was there. He was at the bridge. He was one of the soldiers fighting there. It comes in, in inside there. You've got a great photo of the bridge, so a map of the bridge, a plan of the bridge, where the units were. So this it, it was written not long after war. I must check the publication date. I think it was written. Uh, I have to put my glasses on to see this because I can't bloody read the date because I'm getting old. First published 1978, so yeah, 30 years after the war. And James Soldier, James Sims was a private in the battalion at the bridge there and wrote this um, easy, you know, you can read it in kind of two days. Um, it one sitting, I think I read it in last time, and it just takes you about the fight around the fighting for the bridge, all that stuff. If you're not familiar with the Battle of Arnhem or you only know it from the movie, this kind of elaborates on all those act of actions that you see in the movie there, you know, the, the running around the houses, the bring up the pier to the defense of the bridge there, the, the gradually shrinking perimeter there and puts you in the, in the context of what it was like to be at the bridge. Um, so that is the books I'm going to recommend today. There are many others um, because Arnhem is a subject that has been covered by huge amounts of authors. Dilip Sarkar's book, The Human Tragedy of Arnhem, is also another one that's worth recommending. Um, yeah, and I am racing through them because I'm trying to make these um, the, these book review shows nice and short so they kind of pick up a bit of traction, maybe maybe even go kind of viral. Um, Sheldrake, uh, well, yeah, so if you say Mil Middlebrook's book is, is a good book, then, then I, 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 I doff my hat to you and say, well, we, we're in agreement there. It's, 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 you know, thirty years old now, Middlebrook, I think, but it, it, it just holds up really well. And he's also saying, for a little told aspect, I found Frank Steer's Arnhem: The Fight to Sustain to be full of fascinating detail of the logistics of Arnhem. So there's another recommendation from, from, from uh, the general there. So that's really good. Um, yeah, that there's. Is uh, there's a good there's a good question from Paul Kelly. Is a bridge too far still a good place to start? I would say it's not a it's not a bad place to start. It's 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 Cornelius Ryan wrote well. Um, the thing is, it probably tries to pack it a little bit too much in because it tries to cover the Americans and 82nd, 101st, the Dutch resistance, the British airborne, the the, the you know glider pilots, uh, um, air. air airlift supply operations um 30 core it tries to cover everything and some of the people who contributed um accounts to Kunis ryan both for bridge too far and the longest day were um were um were, were questionable in terms of their accuracy because don't forget Cornelius ryan was a journalist primarily who then wrote about world war ii so it's it's a very readable book and i have a copy of it as so i have Bill Chandler, who was in Airborne Reconnaissance Squadron's own copy of Bridge Too Far. And it is it is a good book. Yeah, 10 Days in the Cauldron. Uh, um, a, a, a name of Ian Ballantyne's book, which is another, another, I nearly bought that one out, but it's come up in the sidebar in this discussion anyway. So um, uh, yeah, that that's that's the ones I'm going to mention. Um, in terms of armor, um, obviously, Silent Green that ends up getting towards um 30 core. So, I will cover some books about 30 core in a second Market Garden show where I may even do a third. I may I may do one about the 82nd and 101st, then do one about 30 core and crossing bridges and 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 armor and 43rd Wessex Division and and all that kind of stuff. There, the Dorsets and Devons, all the others pushing up towards the bridge. There's the poles, you haven't mentioned the poles as well. There's some great books about the poles. There's there's books about the air landing brigade. We haven't touched on the border regiment, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's loads of great books. But in terms of that, um, yeah, there, there, there are that'll be for another show. So there we are. Um, that's my favorite books on Arnhem. Um I I'm gonna say it again. I if you have to go for just one, I'm gonna hold it up again. Martin Middlebrook, Arnhem 1944, the airborne battle. It, it it does cover the poles. It does cover um, the operation to try and get across the bri the river to reach them. So it does cover the Dorsets and the bridge the bridge um, units that were trying to get up to, to you know the advance units of Thirty Corps to try and get across. So it it isn't just about the Battle of Arnhem, but it doesn't include the Americans at, uh, on their drop zones or or the tail of Thirty Corps. It is really about Arnhem, and it is just a really 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 good book so that is my absolute um top book buckingham's book russell chapman i haven't actually read yet it's um 
William Buckingham's book, and I, I, I just, it's, it's on my list of books, but I've got so many Arnhem books, I just, I haven't read it yet, so I cannot comment. I hear good things about it, um, and the other book I, I noticeably haven't mentioned is Anthony Beaver, and um, I'm not going to say anything that could be potentially libelous, but the, at the, um, at the launch of his book, um. I heard that various people kind of walked out because there was some duff information in it. Uh, I, I'm just not an Anthony Beaver fan. I, I, I quite liked his Stalingrad and Berlin book back in the day, but I, I don't know much about them. But I, I felt that his Market Garden book was was really weak. And it's not just my opinion. It's people who actually know the battle intimately say it's it's a, it's a weaker one. Um, and that's not to kind of you know say that everything Anthony Beaver's ever done is bad. But I, I it doesn't come in most people who are who understand the battle's top tens about Arnhem. So we are. That's it. Uh, David Mead saying he never finished the uh, the Beaver book. Um, I don't like his D-Day book at all, if I'm being honest. Anyway, uh, either. So there we are. That's it. Um, in terms of shows today, our, our normal show is later than normal. It's at 8 p.m. UK time, 9 p.m. Uh, European time. And the show with Peter Steer that was um, postponed from yesterday, apparently we have sorted out the microphone problem. I'm doing a test with him in about an hour's time. Uh, but that's rescheduled for tomorrow evening, which I had nothing else on. So the Peter Spear Railway Show is tomorrow. But that's it. I'm going to end it now. And um, I hope you enjoy these um, these um, review shows. They're short and sweet, and I don't go into much detail, but they're based on my genuine opinions, uh, having read the ones I recommend. So there we are. Cheers, everybody. I will see you all next time. Bye.